It's always exciting to worship with you as my family. Amen. But we're especially, I'm especially excited this morning because we have one of our, one of our family come back home uh, from Europe. And uh, she's going to share some good information with us. Um, there are cards on the back. And uh, I'm sure that if you would like to give, uh, that would be accepted. So uh, take a look at that. Uh, our speaker has been in uh, the, the Czech Republic for 13 years. She's been working with uh, Teach Beyond for about nine, I think. And Teach Beyond, uh, very simply, is a, uh, a springboard for uh, teaching English that leads to sharing the good news of Jesus. And so I'm anxious to hear about what's going on today. So let's help me welcome Jessica Weaver back. Good morning, y'all. It is good to be here. Um, I normally don't come in August, so it's nice to be able to see some folks. Um, so yeah, it's good. Um, I would just want to share with y'all a little bit today about um, what I've been doing the past year and also what Teach Beyond does. And we do far more than teach English. Basically anything to do with education, we have our hands in. We have a division that works with higher education. We have a division that works with informal education, like English camps and um, other things like that. We also um, have a division that works with mainly refugees called Beyond Borders. So um, it's been um, it's been exciting to see what God does all around the world. I'm going to mainly focus on Europe for you guys. Um, so um, because that's my purview, I am the regional vice president for Europe, um, which I know it sounds like a fancy title. They just changed it this year, but I basically do the same thing. Uh -huh. So, um, but I just wanted to share this one little bit with you before I kind of get into my uh, bit. Uh, God has called Teach Me On to be an agent of Holy, Holy Spirit empowered transformation among those whom we serve, educators, learners, organizations and communities. And those four words at the end kind of um, line up with our four orienting goals for Teach Me On, and it's that we serve educators and learners, and we ho hope to partner with organizations, and we hope to see transformation not only in our students' lives, in our schools' lives, but in communities and then th throughout the region. So um, we hope it'll be cascading effect, that it starts at school and that uh, we can see, be a partner with the Holy Spirit to see the transformation. We know that we don't do the transformation, we just wanna be conduits of it. Um, so I, I think that's an important distinction. In fact, our president tells a story that um, one of the large donors for Teach Me On said, I can't support you guys anymore because um, the way it was worded on, this, this kind of sentence was worded on our website didn't, say the holy spirit even though we implied it so we definitely changed it because we 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 know that we're not the ones doing the transformation so um steve had asked me um today he didn't know that this was a part of my um presentation but um i just want to show you just in the past 12 months um uh, these are the places i've been um it, that's only for work. I've been uh, a couple other places. Uh, Israel and Greece are not on there. My uh, my mom's church is also a large supporter, and they um, graciously provide a trip every other year to, for their missions partners, who all the missionaries they support, to go to Israel. And this year we went to Israel and Greece, and so that was my second trip with them there and it was just amazing so that's not on this list but you can see um a little bit of i, I know central uh, asia well central asia is not part of the europe region but um for our regions within teach beyond it is so it can it's um you can ask me later where that is because it's being recorded. It's a creative access country, so I can't tell you the name of the country um, right now. Um, 
And in Southeast Asia and South Africa, I know those don't look like Europe either, but we have been having regional conferences for all of our regions. Um, in fact, uh, you see my upcoming travel, I'm going to Brazil in just a month for another regional conference. So it's a way for us to connect with our members, to um, just to really impart our vision and just to hear what's going on in their region and see that we can be encouragement to one another and really um, help um, each other know that they're together. I mean, loneliness is a, a big thing that uh, missionaries experience on the field. Um, in fact, every missionary that I know has combated or dealt with loneliness at some point, including myself. And so, um, so yeah, I, there's a couple of uh, countries that I have in a different country uh, color, and that's because um, those aren't for sure yet. There's probably other places I'm going to go, but the ones in black on upcoming travel, I'm definitely going. I, there's things that I have to do <laughs> in those places. So um, some of it is visiting, visiting um, uh, new schools and um, helping them. And some of it is just um, encouraging our members. And some of it is we have um, we have a conference coming up in Albania. I'm going to a training in Budapest, but while I'm there, I'm going to visit our, our schools there, our members there as well. So um, anyway, just to give you an idea and as you can see, I'm really busy. Like I'm hardly ever in Prague, even though people ask me how, how is Prague? I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> so, um, you know, I would come in and out. I'm usually gone at least once a month. Um, most of the time about twice in the month. So, um, so w one of the things I wanted to talk about with you is uh, a school that we work with in Ukraine called New Generation. And as you guys know, there is a war going on between Ukraine and Russia. And uh, we are in the um, unfortunate position that we have members in both Russia and Ukraine. And it has made life really difficult uh, for the past couple of years. Um, and I hate saying that it's made life difficult for me because I don't live in a war zone. And so it's a very different kind of difficulty. But there, especially the first couple of months after uh, war started in Ukraine um, were, was very difficult for me because I had a lot of moving pieces and just trying to figure out what do we do about our people and you know, all these things. And so um, even though it was stressful for me, my life was not in danger. So I do put that caveat out there. But um, New Generation is a school that we work with. Um, they're a partner school, meaning we uh, we. Um, help support them with whatever services they would like. Um, and one, we actually don't have any members placed at that school. Um, but when the war broke out, about a third of their population ended up moving to the Czech Republic. And so they were kind of having this um, dual campus, one in the Czech Republic and one in Kiev, um, Ukraine. And so that has gone on for the past two years, and uh, Teach Beyond has been able to raise funds for um, displaced people within Ukraine and then also refugees who have left Ukraine. All, all of our countries that border Ukraine that we have members in have dealt with uh, refugees some way, shape, or form. Um, and we've done a lot and we've raised a lot of money to help with both of those situations. And because of that money, we were, I didn't know that this wasn't part of my job description, but I ended up buying generators and Chromebooks and headlamps and uh, uh, radiators and all kinds of things. I never thought I would ever have to, you know, research and figure out what is the best way and where do I buy it and how do I get it there kind of a thing. Um, but we were able to do that because of um, some generous support through um, some donors. And so um, this is a picture, I don't, I'm not showing any of their faces, but this is a picture of the kids on their new Chromebooks. And so um, the reason why we got Chromebooks for them is because when the air raid sirens go off in Kiev, they have to go down in the basement and they need, they had these really old computers that their battery life was not good. So we bought them new ones so they can continue to have class during the middle of an air raid. Sometimes the air raid sirens go on the whole school day and they're down in the basement. And what I heard from Maggie, who is the director that I got to meet um, in, in April 
face to face, not just on Zoom, um, in Croatia where there was a um, conference for um, education leaders. And so um, I was able to meet her there. But um, they go down in the basement and the kids just start praying um, because they, they're praying for their country. They're praying for their family who are fighting. They're praying for peace. Um, they're praying that the sirens will stop. Um, but it's just so encouraging to to see that these kids still want to learn and still they after they pray, they go back to their studies. And um, it's just been amazing to watch. So after um, they've, they're they closing the campus in Czech Republic and a lot of the kids are moving back to uh, Kiev. So, um, yeah, so it's still, I mean, there's still a war going on. So th- there are days that they can't start school um, on time because it's too dangerous for the kids to come out uh, to school. So I would just ask you, and I think it's part of the unity prayer today, to keep Ukraine in your prayers. Um, it's It has been difficult. We're talking, these, these people have lived in survival mode for two years in a way that we can't imagine. And um, I, you know, they don't know from day to day what is going to happen. And it is hard to live in that kind of stress. And if we can be any sort of help, even praying for them, I think that's that's just really important. And you can ask me after for more stories. I have tons of stories about Ukraine. Um, This is one of um, our newest Teach Beyond schools. Um, it's actually a school that has been partnering with Teach Beyond for a very long time. And then um, about a year and a half, ago, well, almost two years now, um, they came to us kind of desperate. Um, so I'm the uh, head of school there, actually, I know through uh, my mom's church because she is also supported by my mom's church. So I've gone to Bucharest, Romania and visited her. She's come to Prague to visit me. We've we've been all over the world together. And um the school came to us and said, look, we are in a desperate situation. Stefania, the head of school, said, I have enough money to keep us going until March. But, here's the but, they were going to pay their building off in June. So we really just had March to June to figure out like how to make it through because they were going to have all this overhead just taken away. And um, so we're... <laughs> in the process legally of taking them over, but we've already started acting as if they are a complete Teach Me On school. And it's just been amazing to see the growth there. Like God was brought together some missions agencies who were able just to pay off that loan because it was such a short time for it to be due. And um, so a lot of amazing things, miraculous things happened in a very short time to make that school sustainable. And they are thriving now. So um that's one of the things we do is come alongside schools and say hey we, we don't have like we're not made of money but we have the ability to help schools raise money to help bring staff i think there's about six or seven staff members that are teach me on now um so it, it's you know we have also brought in a curriculum specialist to help them get their curriculum on track and, and things like that and so um, I've just been very impressed uh, with what God has done in this um, school, and um, their building is amazing. It's beautiful. They have this this great space, so um, it's really encouraging to see what God has been doing there. Um, we have another school in Romania that is interested in becoming a partner school, too, so a lot of things are happening in Romania. I wasn't expecting that. So one of the things that Teach Me On has done is also helped um a lot of several refugee students uh, go to this school, um, helped pay for that through those that fundraising that we've been doing. So, and this this is the school in Central Asia. That this is not the real name of it. <laughs> this is the alias name for the school uh, called International Academy of the Caucasus. It's called something else in real life, but we have to be very protective of them because they can be kicked out of the country. Um, in fact, um, it's a Christian school, international school, um, in a capital city. Um, and they have to be very selective who they even talk to about who can go to this school. Um, so, uh, at least one parent of the school has to have another passport besides this national country. And, um, 
so I have people from all over the world speaking all kinds of languages. Um, and so uh, I'm also on the board of this school and w- we meet once a month. And one of their big strategic goals was to incorporate more prayer into the life of the school and into the community. And I was like, well, hey, Teach Me On has started this prayer initiative, and I can give this church more information about that, too. We do 40 days of prayer every year, starting in January. We started it three years ago, and it has been, like, miraculous. We get together and pray every day for 40 days. And um, as me, as part of the cabinet, we, we meet for 15 minutes every day and pray for 40 days. And it's, it's just really has been wonderful faith building experience for all of us. And, um, some, we have devotions that we put together and, um, and things like that. Well, so I told the schools like, Hey, we do this every year. Um, this was last September that they were starting to talk about it. And I was like, it'll happen in January. I can get you the links. You can get the, the downloads for the, um, for all the times. And they decided as a school, Hey, we're going to do this. And um, every like their classes would get together and um, these kids who were afraid to, to pray out loud in class um, by the end of the 40 days have become like really excited. Some students who go to that school are not from believing families. And so this one child um, really became curious and started asking lots of questions and um she realized that prayer, she's, these are her words. She realized that prayer was God talk and that it was a way to talk to God and God to talk back to her. And she started asking for resources, uh, for reading the Bible. And now she's reading the Bible at home with her unbelieving parents. So like, this is the, this is what we hope for, you know, that we can reach out to, to families and then those families can reach out to the community and it just grows and grows. So, uh, they ended, there are 40 days with a big pancake breakfast. That's one of the pictures you see there. And all the families got together and they had a, a prayer chain going for a different family um, request and needs. So it became a really big community building thing for them. And they're like, we're doing this every year. We're on board. So I will get you guys the links when they come out too. So if you want to participate in it, that's fine because it's open to anyone. So, um, but I just thought that was a great um story to share because it's just a really good example of what we mean by transformational education. Um, Switching gears just a little bit, um, I decided, you know, we are an education organization, so I think in school years, as many of you do, so we're starting a new year. um, And Uh, This summer, when we were doing orientation for our new members, I'd been praying about this for a couple months, about like a theme for the year. And um, our theme for orientation was um, a seat at the table, basically, uh, or gathering at the table. And I still, I kind of wanted to keep that house, you know, like in a house kind of um, idea. But um, this word kept coming to me abide. And I feel like that's a great way for us as a Europe team, uh, the Europe leaders and even the other members in Europe to kind of come around this and this be our focus for the year. And so everything we talk about kind of centering on abide. And um, I know there are many verses, especially in John 15 about abiding, but I I picked this verse, um, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So I think that's my prayer for Europe this year, that we really truly grasp this abiding. Um, It's hard when you are busy at school all day doing all the things and then you have a meeting and then you have to do all the things just to really sit and just be in God's presence and abide. So I'm really hoping that this will help us um, stay on track. And so, yeah, and I just wanted to share that with you guys as well. So you can be praying that for us. Um, Here are some of the countries. Well, it's not some. It's all the countries in Europe where we serve. Um, So you can see that's quite a bit. Um, My my job is to, um, I realize I'm going to 
take that off because I realized there's a name on there that shouldn't be there <laughs> for this thing. So, um, but um, my goal is to visit all those countries. I have not made it yet to all those places. You can tell it's a big list. And um, so my goal is to visit at least our projects at least once every three years. The projects that are operated, adopted by Teach Me On or that are fully functioning as Teach Me On schools or projects, I try to visit those once a year. Um, especially Black Forest Academy, which is in Germany and it's the largest we have about a hundred members there. So that's like the largest amount of members we have in one place in Europe. And so they have a lot more needs than other places where we have 10 or seven members. So um, not to, to, um, you know, make them favorites or be preferential, but there is just more people and they have more needs. So, um, this is this slide is from I know you can't read all the little things, but this slide is from our um, annual report. Um, it just came out a couple months ago from last year. Uh, and this kind of gives you a, an idea of the numbers. So we currently have about 480 members in Europe. It's probably closer to 500. Um, and there's 18 countries that we serve. That changes every year. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But um, And then uh, we have about 112 programs that we're working with currently. I have a list, a really long list of a bunch of people who've come to me in the last couple of months that um, are interested in some uh, becoming part of Teach Me On in some way. And we've kind of been in a holding pattern. Our person that helps us do that retired in May. And we have a new person coming on next week. So I've just told him, hey, can you wait till the fall? And then we can. But um, some places that are not on this list yet, and we, a country that we've never worked in before is Italy. Um, there's a school that is starting in turn in Italy that has asked for some help. A school in Tbilisi, Georgia has asked for help. Um, and then uh, there's there's several um, all over, you know, just it's I'm, I'm amazed at what has been happening in the last couple of years because I feel like the year that the war started in Ukraine, like no one asked to be part of Teach Me On. And I think that was God's grace because I couldn't I couldn't handle it, <laughs> you know, but now I'm, I'm in a better place. And I also have two assistant or associate uh, regional directors who are able to take some of the load off my back so I can focus on some other things. Um, I had been very spread thin the past couple of years, so um, that's been very helpful and a big answer to prayer. Um, I think this might be the last slide. Yeah, that was the last slide. So um, I obviously have a million other things I could tell you, um, but I will stop for now. But if you have any questions, I'm more than happy. Do we have a few minutes for questions? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, like, say you want to go teach at a like Black Forest Academy in Germany, or teach at the International Christian School in Prague. Uh, we um, basically are a sending agency, as well as other things. So they go through the application process through Teach Beyond to become a member, and so then we help. We provide things like. Um, donor, um, we have a, a donor department that helps with Steve. I know has talked with Bev, who is the head of our donor um, department. And uh, so we have this great group of people that work on our behalf that um, help us with donations. So I don't have to track it like, you know, like I don't have to physically do anything with it. Um, we also have what we call member care, and that is a network of people who really just check in with folks. And then we have a few people who are licensed counselors, or we have connections to counseling centers. So when there is a um, an issue, so we it basically means we provide those people a bunch of services, and so uh, they're members of ours, and so we want to take care of them. So yeah. And so, like, an example, the school in Prague, 
has about 17 to 20 Teach Beyond members. So we, we make up about 60% of their staff, but there are other missions organizations that have members at that school too. And so the same for schools that we kind of own and operate. We're not the only organization that has members there. Black Force Academy, we own that school, but there are um, like people from RCE and team and all these other missions organizations. So yeah, there. Yeah. Right. I, so, yes. So that's a good point. So when I started out with Teach Beyond, I had been with another organization called uh, ESI. And with that organization, I was the Central Europe Program Director. Basically, that organization closed its doors in 2014. And Teach Beyond wrote a job description for me to basically do the exact same thing, to pilot that program for Teach Beyond. They were already doing things in Christian schools. They had not been, they had only been in a couple of public schools, so they wanted to branch out and do that. So when I came on, that's all I was doing was overseeing English and public schools. And then um, in in fall of 2018, they asked me if I would consider being the Europe director uh, regional director, which now has become the vice president. So, um, yeah, so they had already been doing all those things. I had just only been focused on English. So, but now I'm focused on all the things. So it has been a, um, a learning curve for me because I, none of my school experience had ever been in a Christian school. I went to public school. I went to public university. I taught in public school. <laughs> So even overseas, I taught in public school. So um, it was a big learning curve. That's why I joined the board of the the Christian school in Prague, so I can learn kind of the inner workings. And now I definitely understand more. I'm on a couple school boards and all those places in that list that I briefly showed of the countries we're in that had an asterisk by, uh, those are places we actually have a registered entity in those countries. I'm on the board of all of those countries. So, because basically I act, I'm the president of our organization is an ex officio member of all those boards. I represent the president for Europe on those boards, just like the, the um, Latin America vice president represents the president on the, on the boards there. And so um, basically I am the president for Europe. I make all the decisions I consult David, our president, if there are some president precedent making things or things that are a little complicated or can get a little hairy, which, as you can imagine, that's almost every day. So, <laughs> yeah. But that was a good question. Yeah, because my ministry definitely has changed over the last few years. So, yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, thanks again for letting me share with you guys. Like Steve said, I feel like this is family and you're a big part of what I do. I couldn't do it without you guys. And um, I'm very thankful uh, to be here today. And I will try to come to the 25th uh, anniversary. I'll try. That's my last Sunday in the States. So, um, we'll, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but when she said good morning, (laughs) y'all, I know she has not been uh, in Europe that long. Y'all, good, good. Uh, That's beautiful. Uh, When Jessica was going to speak to us this morning, I decided I wanted to do the unity prayer because uh, I think what she does is a result of unity prayers. God is at work 
uh, all over the world. And every Sunday we pray for that work, that God's spirit is moving and God is changing lives. And so in some ways, <clears throat> I want to feel like we pray for Jessica every day, every Sunday, because we're praying for unity uh, all over the world, that everyone would come to know Jesus. And what better way to do that than, like Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by the way you love each other. Sometimes that's not been the church's reputation. Uh, <clears throat> let me give a few thoughts about my own unity prayer experience. In 1998, I began uh, the MDiv program at ACU, took my first class, short course in one week in uh, January. And uh, <clears throat> it was church history one. Uh, the teacher was Jeff Childers, and uh, that's okay. That's twenty-five years ago, so you know, so about about the same time this church was started. And uh, church history one covered from Acts to fifteen hundred, and so we're talking about the history of the church in that period of time, and. Uh, <clears throat> A year or so after that, as I continued the program, uh, I had Church History 2, which was 1500 to now. And Doug Foster was my professor, and they were great. Both of them were great. Well, a few years after I'd gotten the degree, uh, I decided I want to learn some more stuff. And it was over the Christmas uh, break again, and Jeff... Childers was teaching again church, uh, church history one. And I asked him, uh, could I sit in on his class? Sit in is different than being audit the class because you got to pay for that. You know, I was going for the freebie route. And uh, Jeff said to me, well, you realize, Bob, you had this class before and it's a history class. So what we're talking about is not really going to change. You kind of already got this. And as a matter of fact, you've already been teaching some of this uh, to, you know, on the undergraduate level. And so uh, I thought about that a minute. I said, I'm still coming. And so I brought my notebook from about six, seven years before, and I had my notes and what happened is that something had changed. And what had changed was his perspective. And, and it, it became very apparent as he used a different word to describe what was going on in the second and third and fourth, especially second, third and fourth centuries in the church. And, and what the term that he had used that first round was heretics. And a lot of the church history is about heretics because it also has to do with theology and doctrine. What do you believe is true? And what did the church believe was true? But in that second go round, instead of using the word heretics, he used the word unorthodox. Can you, can you feel the difference in those two words? Heretic, unorthodox. One of the biggest issues at the time was about the Trinity. And after all, who can really explain the Trinity? But the church was coming out with a pretty standard way. This is what the Trinity means. And this is what we believe about the Father. It's what we believe about the Son. And this is what we believe about Jesus. And, but there was a problem because a lot of people saw that the explanation that the Orthodox Church was giving was, was not monotheistic. It was, it meant that there was maybe more than one God. And some of the Christians, that was one of their core beliefs that there's just one God. But these Trinity guys say there's three gods. But because how can you really explain that? Can any of you really? I mean, really, that's a challenge. But, but at one point, 
the heretics, if you believe different, you got thrown out of the church. You got thrown out of the church. You got exiled. Sometimes you were thrown out of the city. Sometimes you were killed. Uh, that's happened all throughout church history. This kind of divisive fighting heretic because people are different and they think different. You know what truth means, right? Truth is what I think is right. That's what good doctrine means. <laughs> My doctrine, that's the good one. That's facetious, you know. A few weeks ago, we prayed for a church and, and uh, I was, it, it, their website listed all the things they believed. And I, I read that list and I thought, well, that's interesting. I believe in some of those things. Not all of those things. I certainly wouldn't describe what they believed as what I believe. And, and so even though I agreed with some of their statements, but I didn't agree with some of their statements, you know what I did that Sunday? Prayed for them. Prayed for them. And, and I feel like they prayed for me. You know, uh, in our in the Church of Christ history, and some of you in here are Church of Christ uh, background, and maybe <coughs> most of you have a background other than no background. Uh, but Alexander Campbell was kind of the one of the leaders that kind of how the Church of Christ, as we know it today, emerged in the early 1800s, and he had two major goals. And one would be accomplished by the accomplishment of the other. The, the first was unity, that all Christians would be one. The second was that all Christians would follow Scripture. So these two things, Scripture, unity. And his thought was, if everybody reads the same Bible, and we really read it and try to follow its teachings, then we'll all be together. That didn't work out too good. For him personally, the, the issue that really got to him was the issue of slavery. And, and how could the Bible say these things about slavery and then these other things about slavery and and so some people, and so the nation was divided, the Civil War began, and he was flip-flopping. He'd go speak one place, and his sermon would be about how terrible slavery is. And he'd go preach another place, and his sermon would be about how the Bible doesn't, you know, doesn't forbid slavery. And he's going back and forth and back and forth. Uh, several of people in his family thought that this issue and the, and the damage it caused to his you know, way of thinking ultimately led to his death. He died in 1866. He thought that a doctrine-oriented understanding of Scripture would make everybody one. I don't think that can happen. But I do believe that God wants us to be unified. Christians all over the world. The Christians that Jessica works with don't think like all the Christians in Arlington. And yet, can we be one? Can we be one body, the church? one body. So we pray like Jesus did that the church would be one, that we would be one, that we would be one with the Father and one with each other. It won't happen because we agree about everything. It'll happen because God gives us a heart for each other 
to love each other, to love each other even when we disagree. And so uh, today we're going to pray for two churches and one country as we do every Sunday. And we're going to pray for the Pleasant View Baptist Church and the Praxis Community Church. And we're going to pray for the country of Ukraine. Uh, Because of personal friends I have who lived and still some do in the Ukraine, I pray for the Ukraine all the time. One of the first things I do in the morning, as a matter of fact, and this has been going on (laughs) way too long, uh, I, l- I look on my news feed for what happened in Ukraine last night. And so I'm praying for peace in Ukraine. But I can't, I've come to, I've come to this point where I can't pray for Ukraine without praying for Russia. And, and for the Christians in Russia. And for the Christians in Ukraine. And for those who are not Christians in Russia, and those who are not Christians in Ukraine. And and so that prayer is a hard prayer. But I believe God wants unity and he wants peace. We'll pray uh, for those two churches and then we'll pray for Ukraine. And we'll pray for Russia too. I so much thank you though, Jessica, for the work that you're doing with Ukrainian refugees. Uh, Again, some of my personal friends have done much work with Ukrainian refugees and continue to do so. So thank you. Let's pray. Father, we are trying to learn what you want us to do as we read your word and we read the prayer of your son Jesus in John 17. And we want to pray that prayer that you would make us one. Father, we've not done a great job in creating unity ourselves. And so we pray for your spirit to move in us and move in your churches everywhere around the world. That you would make us one. That we would come to love each other. That we would come to forgive like you forgive. Father, that we would learn what is important in our lives and what is not. And Father, I pray for you to lead us as we strive and pray for unity. Father, I thank you for the churches here in Arlington. And I thank you today for the Pleasant View Baptist Church and the Praxis Community Church. And that they will uh, experience your presence today. And that you would lead them to give glory to your name in the community here and in everything uh, they do in your name around the world. Father, I pray for Ukraine. Today I pray for people who are going to battle. I pray for the families who will lose loved ones today. I pray for peace. And Father, in in that peace, I not only pray for the war to stop, but also that your Holy Spirit would come and a revival would happen in the country of Ukraine. And those who know you would love you more. And those who don't know you would come to know you and love you. And I pray the same for Russia. Father, I pray for our brothers and sisters in Russia who are struggling. 
who's struggling in their own uh, heart to know what your will is. And I pray that for America as well, that we would come to seek your kingdom first and everything else would come next. Father, we love you. And we pray this prayer knowing that we cannot do this without your power. So we pray for unity today. In Jesus' name, amen.